Welcome to the Brisbane Property Podcast with your hosts, Melinda and Scott Jennison. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Brisbane Property Podcast. My name is Scott Jennison. I'm the Acquisition uh, Manager here at Streamline Property Buyers. Yes, welcome back, everybody. Melinda Jennison's my name, uh, Managing Director and Buyers Agent here at Streamline Property Buyers. It is Market Update Day. It's one of our favourite episodes. We spend a lot of time preparing the content for this podcast to help you, our listeners, understand what is actually going on in the Brisbane market. We know um, these podcast episodes are are one of the most downloaded podcast episodes every month. So um, we know there's a, a huge volume of listeners out there wanting to get some insights in terms of what is actually happening. Of course, we're going to summarise the data as we always do. Remembering always that data is retrospective. It is looking in the rear view mirror, but we are also going to report on what we've been seeing on the ground. And, and wow, there's been a definite shift and we're going to bring that um, information to you today. So a couple of things, and, and as Melinda said, she puts a lot of time into um, researching all this information. So a really quick, broad sort of overview on what we're going to go through. Um, listing volumes, definitely down about 17 odd percent. Auction clearance rates sitting around 53. Buyer activity is very high. Um, house values and unit values um, on the way up. And gross yields around about 4.3%. So there's a, a very, very, very summary. broad summary of what we're going to go through. Um, so let's let's jump in and, and start talking about what's actually happening in general. Yes, and if you've not heard the news reports already, um, it's an amazing how quickly the um, the sentiment can change when the news reporters start publishing something positive about the property market. Um, you'll notice that the news reports have indicated that across Australian property markets, um, it's no longer in decline in terms of median values. We are on the way up. When we look at Brisbane, according to the CoreLogic data, that is also the case. It's the case for both housing and units. Um, but we're going to break down that data. And we're also going to report the prop track trends, which are actually a little bit different to give a really um, broad view of what we've actually been seeing. It's interesting. It's interesting. You, you, like we, we talked about this in so many other podcasts where we talk about the media's influence and, mm. and what that has, that influence can actually have on property and people's sentiment. So when people are talking about or certain media, are, are talking about the property market's going to crash and it's going to decline and it's going to go down all this, these predictions that they've actually had, which um, I think in, for Brisbane, um, that has not happened. Um, but yet, we're on the way back up again and people are saying now's now's you want to get in because the market's going to go crazy again and property it's going to go up again so it's understanding where you get the information who you listen to and what you see and, and which is what we do we can week out we're on the ground we're looking at how many people are going to opens and auctions and we're actually seeing it live uh, in person um, and talking to everyone about what's actually happening and getting a feel of that sentiment you actually hear on the ground so understanding that and that's what we try and actually help people here not only with the data but also what's actually happening on the ground as well and we've got some real examples this month where we're going to share the property addresses what those properties sold for and what um, the median trends have been in that suburb to track what they should have sold for if they were following a median trend so we're going to give some real life examples of why you cannot rely on a median value trend at a suburb level or a city level to determine whether all properties have actually increased or decreased in value value over a specific period of time. So hopefully you get some good takeaways from the episode today. So Brisbane property, property prices um, starting to grow again. Um, several months we've seen a couple of some small falls, I think, um, but it's starting to grow again. Quality listings are scarce. Um, good properties are selling and, and selling fast. Um, we're definitely seeing that. We're back to multi offers, um, some good results at some auctions and, and the rental market really, really tight. Uh, that hasn't it really hasn't changed. It's probably got worse, if anything. Mm. Um, so rental market's really, really tight. Um, so when you're looking at that, especially the investor side of it, um, you know, that's ticking a lot of boxes, I think, for investors wanting to get into a market that is still affordable, that you can actually get in and buy good quality um, product for in good locations and get a tenant. 
Absolutely. Now, you might have missed it, but um, back in March, there was a big news report that came out where Brisbane was voted by the Time magazine as one of the world's greatest places for 2023. So it really put Brisbane on the world map. There is a lot of hype that is starting to develop in the lead up to the 2032 Olympic Games. Now, we're the first to admit that an Olympic Games um, event is not going to have an impact on property prices. That's just ridiculous to think um, that a two-week event or a, a four-week event, if you want to include the Paralympic Games, is going to influence property values. Where the change will come is as a result of the infrastructure um, and the economic development and the creation of jobs that will be created or that will come between now and the 2032 Olympic Games. So the event itself is not the catalyst. It is everything that is going to be happening because of the event in the lead up to the event and also following the event that we believe is going to um, to drive property values in some locations, but not all. And I think we are now in a very different environment compared to where we were 12 months ago. And this is when it is so important to understand how the different locations will perform differently simply because of affordability constraints that some buyers have in some areas. And we're going to dedicate a whole podcast to this um, within the next few weeks where we're going to really unpack why all property values increased in a very low interest rate environment and why now is going to be more important than ever to select locations because not all property values will continue to trend in the same way and it's going to be so important for property investors and home buyers to understand which locations will outperform and why and we're going to share that information in an up and coming episode up and coming episode with you soon. So on, on that, um, I know the Olympic, we talk about that Olympics and Paralympics, um, you know, just Brisbane itself, and we've, we've talked about infrastructure and things like that as well. Um, we know that Queen's Wharf is, is well and truly going ahead. It's looking amazing when you, when you drive down past or you go to South Bank and you look back across, um, the two towers are going up. It's, it's really progressing really well. Um, Dexas development down along the river um, near the old Eagle Pier, uh, area um, that is is all happening as well. Um, I did hear a, again on the news this morning. They were talking on the radio um, the planned eight nine kilometre walking path, which will link up the Gabba, Queens, um, Brisbane Live, um, Suncorp Stadium, and all those areas. So that walking path, which will, will become the, make the Olympics more walkable, basically. Um, and then I was actually talking to the other day, um, our boys play for water polo for UQ Barras. Um, and out at UQ at St. Lucia, um, the new development that's going to happen out there, which is a Paralympic um, uh, training facilities, uh, that $30 million project has, has got the nod as well. So there's lots of these little things. I mean, so $30 million is not really little, but <laughs> when we talk about these infrastructures and how Brisbane's going to change, it's, it's actually happening. So there's things that are starting to happen and the planning and everything's starting to get approved now and that construction will will actually commence and things will start to happen. So Brisbane will change. It's exciting, as you can tell the way we talk about it. Um, it's exciting what is happening around the place and how that will change and what influence that will have on Brisbane changing as a, um, as a city as well. But what is most interesting, in my opinion, is that only one or two months ago, we were still getting a lot of economists and banks predicting price falls in Brisbane and indeed throughout Australia throughout the rest of 2023 and into 2024. Now, the fact that we've seen a, a big deceleration in the rate of price falls over the last two to three months, and now we've seen that turn around or transition to positive um, territory once again, indicates that quite often economists get it wrong, banks get it wrong. And there's so many examples that we can share with you where, you know, bank predictions just did not turn out to be accurate. We can only look back at the pandemic where the um, predictions from economists and banks were that property values would, you know, fall at a very high rate, but in actual fact, they, they did not. Um, all I can say is property value price movements are based on what we see on the ground in terms of supply, which is the, the number of properties available for sale and the demand, which is the number of buyers that are active in a given market. Yes, people sitting at a desk that are looking at um, the indicators that can influence demand or supply can make predictions, but rarely are they accurate. Um, and, and I think that there's opportunity to dedicate a whole episode to 
what have been some of the past forecasts that we've seen and how they have actually played out. And I think we should earmark that for an up and coming episode as well, Scott. Yeah, I think by memory, I think it was 30 to 40% property prices were going to, to fall. During the pandemic, yeah. Anyway, that did not happen. So, okay, let, let's start jumping into what's actually happening and what, what we're seeing up here um, through the data side of it. So buyer activity, as I said, um, there's a lot of activity, there's a lot more buyers. Um, what, what's the data showing on that side of things? Yes, look, um, I think that a lot of the Australian Bureau of Statistics data that's reporting on population growth trends has confirmed that their uh, Queensland as a state has actually experienced a greater volume of population movements into our state than any other state across Australia up to the most recent data that's been reported. That's over the last 12 months. So it confirms that Queensland's population is growing at a faster rate than any other city. Now, of course, the international borders have been closed through some of that collection period. So that trend may not continue. But of course, what we've experienced in the last 12 months in the lead up to when this data has been um, been released is that borders were closed in the international um, space. So we've had a huge volume of interstate migrants. Now, all of those people need somewhere to live. Um, and that's what's creating this rental crisis and also um, this heightened demand when it comes to buying properties that are available for sale. And I do have some information about this, um, because if we break down the volume of the population growth in Queensland, there were 2,201 people every single week entering our state. And the majority of those people migrate to Southeast Queensland, which is the geographical location between the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast, of which Brisbane is within the center of that um, region. So that's significant. Now, this is happening at the same time as we've got still at least one third less stock available for sale. So listing volumes, the total volume of properties available for sale right now in Brisbane is still about 30% down on our five year average. So we've got more and more people wanting to actually buy more and more people wanting to, um, to get into the market. And yet we've still got um, a shortage of properties that are available for sale. Um, we can look at new listings and Scott reported at the beginning of the podcast, new listings down 17.1%. That is compared to the same period last year. So we're being told and we're hearing in the media that there's this um, rental or, or rather this fixed rate cliff where there's going to be Armageddon and people will have to sell because they can't afford to hold. And yet what the data is showing is that actually more and more people are holding on to their properties. They're not selling. And that's potentially because they do have the savings buffers in place to hold properties. One thing I'll also say is that when you are buying into a suburb where the majority of people that own in that suburb own their own home outright, or the average hold period for that suburb um, might be 10 plus years, people in that suburb are not exposed to the fact that there's been um, interest rate increases because they either have no mortgage or they actually have a mortgage which is you know worth a very small portion of the value of their property it's only those people that may have got into the market in the last 12 or 18 months that that may have um, been stretched however there's usually enough buyers with the disposable income in these types of locations to purchase those properties in the event that anyone like that may need to sell the very opposite is likely to be true in areas where you've got um, a lot of new builds, new estates where you've got a lot of first home buyer activity. Um, in these areas, it's much less likely that the majority of owners um, own their properties outright. It is much more likely that those owners actually have a mortgage. And if it is a new estate, it's more likely again that those areas um, are going to be exposed to um, to, to higher LVRs or loan to value ratios. So again, not all locations are going to be impacted in the same way. And this is absolutely critical for everybody to understand because I think that it's quite common for um, a, a, a blanket approach to be applied to all locations within um, Australia, within Brisbane, within you know certain locations within Brisbane, but that's simply not the case. Every location is performing differently. Um, and certainly as we move forward in a higher interest rate environment, we will continue to see that, um, especially those growth drivers, will continue to drive property values in some areas, 
but not others because there's going to be um, absolutely affordability buffers. And I think I think buyers are also being a bit more selective too with those with the the, the number of properties, fewer properties coming to sale. They're being a bit more selective uh, in what they're looking to buy. Your B and your C grade properties, mm. they're probably the ones that are sitting on the market and having it more of an impact um, on those types of properties. Whereas your good quality properties, um, they're being taken off the market and taken off very, very fast. Yeah, so that that is the area we're really seeing either auctions going um, and selling really fast, or properties selling prior to auction, mm. which we're seeing a bit of that, and multi offers. They're the sort of properties that are moving fast. They're your A grade properties as we would call them, whereas your B and C grade properties probably sitting a little bit longer and they'll probably play out their um, their sales their sales campaign, I'd say. And that's one thing the data will show, absolutely, that listing or days on market have actually doubled over the last 12 months. And that is because, as Scott has just highlighted, those B and C grade properties are um, are not sought after. There's there's less demand. Anything that's in a flood zone is sitting on the market for a lot longer. A lot of properties that need a, a significant amount of work sitting on the uh, on the market for a lot longer. That's what's actually causing that median um, shift in days on market because we are still seeing those A grade properties in premium locations sell very very quickly. And I think anyone relying on data alone, um, it's a big mistake because you must actually um, interpret what does it mean and why are we seeing these data trends because it's that local knowledge based on being out on the ground every Saturday and understanding what is selling and what is transacting that makes sense and, and, and allows us to make meaning of that data. I just wanted to also say clearance rates. Um, yeah. So throughout March, the average clearance rates according to domain were sitting at 53% across the um, every Saturday. Um, that was actually slightly lower than last month, meaning back in February. Um, but I will say clearance rates are not always an indication of the buyer's intent. Sometimes it's an indication of the seller's um, intent because what we have seen according to Apollo auction data, um, is that an average of 3.7 registered bidders um, were um, seen or were registered for every auction across the month of March. So there's willingness, there's a willingness of buyers because it wasn't that people were turning up to auction with no registered bidders. With an average of 3.7 registered bidders for every auction, it shows there's, there's definitely that buyer depth, but perhaps the sellers um, and the buyers did not meet in terms of where that value was. Where we see auction clearance rates um, declining at the same time as bidder registrations declining, that's when we have concerns for what's happening in the direction of the market. So again, auction clearance rates, not always a perfect indication of, of, of buyer intent and buyer activity, um, but something we do track and report on to, to help you understand, you know, what they're actually saying and, and what it's what it's showing. And, and your median house prices, um, I mean, it's a lot more affordable um, than what it will cost for housing in, in areas such as Sydney and Melbourne. Mm. Um, so, you know, people relocating what you actually get up here. And I, I always say to people, um, the bang for your buck, um, what, what you get in Brisbane compared to what you would get in Sydney and Melbourne, um, you, you definitely get um, a lot better. Um, of a type of a product and then locations when you get closer to the CBD and that sort of things yep. compared to what they're leaving behind down south. Absolutely. Um, I was interesting, what, I know you, you put a little quote in there and if you can throw to that, um, it was one from Tim Lawless from uh, Core Logic. Um, what he actually said as well. Yeah, so a statement made in um, in the most recent CoreLogic um, data release at the end of March was that although interest rates are high and there is an ex expectation the economy will slow throughout the year, it's clear that there are other factors now placing upward pressure on home prices. Um, and that's what we've been alluding to for a number of months. We've got a shortage of supply that is not enough properties available for sale at the same time as we've got demand continuing to increase. And of course, with the most recent um, interest rate pause that has also fueled consumer confidence, which has started to increase again. We're seeing that in our own inquiry, much more activity in terms of new inquiry, um, more confidence from buyers that um, are willing to transact. And that's just because the sentiment as a whole has um, has shifted off the back of the, the pause in interest rates mm. and also the news that um, the median value prices are starting to trend up again. And just just very quickly before we jump into the um, the numbers, it just it just shows again with what we're talking about with the um, the confidence with people, the prices, the type of product product that you can actually buy here in Brisbane, and, and that 
rental market that is mm. so, so tight. Mm. Um, as I say, for investors, um, it's ticking all the boxes, what you can actually buy mm. to get into the property compared to what you would buy in other states, in, in Sydney and Melbourne, in other capitals, uh, which are the, the big capitals, um, what you actually buy for that and then that rental side of it, knowing you'll get a tenant. Um, that That's, look, for an investment side, I think it really does tick a lot of boxes for investors. Absolutely. Let's talk about so uh, market prices. movements. Yep. Yeah. So dwelling prices, we always have to remember this is a combined um, number for both units and townhouses, but um, this is where we saw positive growth according to CoreLogic in the Brisbane housing market throughout the month of March, 0.1% price change. So minimal, but definitely um, back in the black out of the red. So um, when we look at the prop track data, and you'll recall we've been reporting on both big data houses in the last uh, number of market update podcasts here on the Brisbane Property Podcast. That prop track data actually showed a very, very small um, fall in dwelling values for Brisbane of negative 0.06%. So a negligible um, amount. However, we always like to be um, transparent about what different data sets are reporting because that does help us um, to understand overall what might actually be happening. And, um, you know, in this instance, it, it means that the market is definitely flatlining in terms of those median values. So those people that go, oh, it's still dropped, um, just to let, just to sort of quantify that, for a million dollar property, that's $600. Correct, over the, so. the month. So it's really negligible. Yep. So house, house values? Look, I think that we all know, we've been reporting this for a number of months, that house value changes in Brisbane um, have been more significant on the downside than unit value changes in Brisbane. Um, however, for the first month since back in uh, June, I believe, 2022, for the first month in March, we saw positive price changes in the median values for houses in Brisbane, 0.1% increase. Now, when we look over the last 12 months, houses in median values have retracted 10.4%. Um, that does not mean that every house in Brisbane has gone down in value by that amount. And we've got some um, evidence um, and facts around that shortly. Um, but prop track data over the month of March showed house values retracted 0.02%. So um, very, very minor changes there. Again, evidence across both data sets that um, Brisbane values are certainly not declining at the rate that they were about three or four months ago. Um, and there's definitely been a recovery. And, and just keep in mind for any new listeners, and I'm sure our loyal listeners that have listened to us before, this is Greater Brisbane yes. we're talking about. Um, so when you talk Greater Brisbane, core logic median value there is $772,020. And uh, prop track is $801,000. Yeah. And look, you know, why there's a discrepancy between do two data sets, no one will really know. It's meant to be reporting and recording on the same information, but um, we like to be transparent about um, the discrepancies between each data set, which obviously um, is all the more reason why you need to also um, overlay data with on the ground experience and um, and information. And and, there, and the next part, the, the units, which which I know we did talk about this a long, long time ago, and we said, watch the unit market. Mm -hmm. um, the little battlers, I suppose you want to call them, the, the units that people can get into. Getting into a unit, getting closer to the CBD, um, something we, we sort of look at pretty close here in Brisbane, um, the unit values. Yeah, positive growth across the month of March, according to CoreLogic, 0.2% price increase. Um, CoreLogic is putting the median value now at $492,415. Prop track over the same period showed a really minor change of negative 0.3%. Um, that's putting a median value at 532,000 across Greater Brisbane. So for whatever reason, their median is higher. What I will say is over the last 12 months, CoreLogic is still reporting um, positive price growth in the unit sector for Brisbane of 2% up. Um, and PropTrack is still also reporting positive price growth in the unit sector of 3.76% up. So despite um, the fall away in property values in the housing sector. We've still seen positive growth in the unit sector, which is another reason why those dwelling values data um, becomes much less reliable as, a, as an indicator. We must break it down to units and townhouses, which is what we do on this podcast each month. And, and another, sorry, another one, just for those people that are new to listening, um, because we are getting a lot of new listeners coming onto our podcast, which is fantastic. Um, all of this information that we're talking about now, um, you can go to our website, um, streamlined property buyers, 
um, no, website, streamlineproperty.com.au, but Streamline Property Buyers, um, who we are, you can find us. Um, and Melinda does this blog and puts it out for people to read. So <clears throat> all of this information is just sharing information with people, which is which is fantastic. Um, for those that want to sit down and read it and have a look, um, go, go to our website and you can have a look at the blogs. Rental market updates. Yep. So let's talk first about vacancies. So we, um, we've been very, you know, dominant talking about the fact that we do have a rental crisis in Brisbane. Um, there, there are not enough properties available to rent. Um, vacancy rates, um, very small change between the months of February and March. So um, in February, you might recall, vacancy rates were sitting at 0.8%. In March, 0.9% um, citywide. I'll break that down into some regions so we can understand what's happening in some of the um, various parts of Greater Brisbane. So in the Beanley Corridor, vacancy is sitting at 0.7%, no change between the two months. The CBD um, increased from 0.9% in February to 1.1% in March, so slightly above that um, that broader uh, number for all of Greater Brisbane. East Brisbane, no change, sitting at 1%. Inner Brisbane, small increase from 0.9% to 1% throughout the two months. Ipswich, this is an area that um, I think we'll continue to watch. Um, in February, sitting at 1.1%, that trended up to 1.3% in March. So whilst that's still extremely tight, um, it's an upward trend that's been continuing since August 2022, where vacancy rates in that region were sitting at 0.5%. So it's the only region throughout all of Greater Brisbane where vacancy rates have continued to trend up. So we'll be watching that to see if there's um, a reason for, for why that's occurring. North Brisbane current vacancy sitting at 0.8, which is a small increase from 0.7% one month ago. Southeast Brisbane um, from 0.9 in February to 1.1% vacancy in March. And then Southern Brisbane, no change, 0.9% vacancy. Western Brisbane, further tightening from 1% in March to 0.9% in March. Now, these numbers are extremely tight regardless of where we're looking. Um, but it's an indication of the fact that there's simply a not a lot a lot of properties that are available to rent. Um, and you know, in our conversations with property managers, there's still a lot of tenants lining up for every open home, and that's what is still putting that upward pressure on rents. And, and the values of those, obviously, they're still increasing. Yeah. So over the last twelve months, according to CoreLogic, house rents have increased um, by eleven point two percent in Brisbane. Um, anyone that owns an investment property that that may have seen a, a recent um, renewal of the tenancy agreement. Um, if you're not having that conversation with your property manager about increasing the rent, it's probably it probably means that your property is being under rented. So um, it, it's important to have that conversation. Um, in terms of units, definitely much stronger rental price growth in that segment of the market. We've seen 16.1% change in rents in the unit market across all of Greater Brisbane over the last 12 months. Now, this is a huge, huge mm. shift, well ahead of inflation for any tenants that are out there paying rent. Um, and the biggest concern that, excuse me, that I have is around many, many areas in, in parts of Greater Brisbane now um, are simply unaffordable for tenants. And a measure of affordability is where tenants are paying 30% or more of their take-home earnings towards their rent. Um, there's a lot of locations, a lot of suburbs where tenants are now paying um, on average in excess of 40% of their take-home earnings in rent. Um, in those sorts of locations, it is very unlikely that rents can continue to increase because people simply cannot afford to continue to pay more. They just won't have the financial capacity. At the same time, there's still locations where rents are very affordable relative to incomes in a particular suburb. Um, and I think this is Investment 101. It comes down to understanding safe investment practices, regardless of market conditions, because there were so many people that entered the market when interest rates were at historical lows, expecting those conditions to um, to stay in place for a much longer period. But the reality is interest rates will always cycle up and down, and you must buy an investment property that's going to perform regardless of the broader economic conditions. And that's obviously something that we pride ourselves on when we're making recommendations for our clients. And I touched at the, the start of the podcast about the, about the yield side of things. So gross yields at the moment are currently 4.1% for houses and 5.4% um, for units, according to CoreLogic. Mm. 
One thing I will say, um, there was a report that came out last month um, by the Queensland Council of Social Services, and it's it's a very sad reality that homelessness in Queensland has surged 22% since 2017. Uh, that's a huge uptick in the number of people that either can't afford to find a home or simply can't um, you know, because of the competition that's out there, can't actually secure a home. There's currently more than 300,000 Queenslanders who are experiencing housing insecurity. So, you know, these are big numbers. And unfortunately, um, you know, there's still so many ways that the governments are disincentivizing investors. And there was reports even last month about placing um, rental price yes. caps um, on rental properties. Now, of course, that was scrapped by the Queensland government. It was commentary that came out in the media, um, but where that has become um, something that's going to be implemented is that you can't increase rents more than once every 12 months. Well, most uh, property investors would have a 12 month tenancy agreement in place. So that's going to have a little impact on the industry. But when these announcements come out, it does scare people. It frightens people away from wanting to invest and unfortunately it's mum and dad investors that do provide the majority of private rental accommodation for those that, that need homes because the government um, just have not been keeping up and in Queensland only three percent of um, housing that is available to rent is provided by our state government the balance 97 percent is provided by mum and dad private investors so um, seems crazy to disincentivize the people that are providing the accommodation for um, families and you know mums and dads with children and and professional couples that need to call someplace home it just doesn't make sense to me to disincentivize investors and in fact right now they should be incentivizing investors to actually bring more supply to the market to eliminate some of the crisis that we have. Yeah, slightly, slightly off track, but still on that in a little way. Um, probably a tip for those investors that are out there and you're getting good rent on your properties as well, keep up the maintenance on the properties. Um, it's, it's a tip I'll, I'll tell people all the time is keep that maintenance up on your property. Yes, you're getting good rent and you might think, oh, look, I don't need to worry about it because the rental market's so tight and I don't have to do anything with the property it'll cost you money in the long run. So whilst it's good now and things are, things are good, keep the property updated, keep it up well maintained, because um, long term wise, it'll actually save you a lot of money as well um, if you're doing the right thing as you go along the way. And I think one thing we always stress on this podcast is that there's always markets within markets and Brisbane is not one property market. And I think we've been clear in explaining suburb by suburb, um, you're going to experience um, different market conditions, certainly as we move forward. There's been a recent report that's been put out by Terry Ryder um, from Hot Spotting. Um, now that report showed that the strongest market segment in Greater Brisbane right now is the inner Brisbane precinct. It's certainly an area that we operate in within the Brisbane City Council region and we are seeing that on the ground. We've been reporting about that for the last three months since the beginning of the year. Um, the fact that that buyer activity has actually been increasing week on week and it is not slowing down. And I would even argue that we're starting to see evidence of FOMO slipping back into the market mm. simply because we've got um, a, a higher volume of buyers than we do properties available. So people are getting fearful. There is that fear of missing out. Um, that's the acronym FOMO. Um, so people are actually starting to pay more than they probably need to, especially when it comes to a multiple offer situation. So getting guidance around price in this type of market becomes really essential so that you don't actually overpay. So on the ground, um, I, I guess this is an area we, we like to share um, some information with people on. Obviously, we've given the information there. We're telling you what's what we're sort of seeing and, and, and the sentiments out, sentiments out there that, you know, things are looking positive. Brisbane's growing. Prices are heading back up again. Um, there's a lot of excitement. So people obviously want to know what's actually happening on the ground. Um, I was at an, or we were actually in open on the weekend um, looking for a house, looking at a house in Nunda. Uh, Nunda's just in the inner north area. Had an open on the Wednesday, had an open again on the Saturday. They had six offers on the Saturday put on the property. So that just shows you that multi offer. Um, set up and, and that's in the high one mills, um, that property as well. I've got an example here, um, a 96 Gallipoli Road at Carina Heights, a property that went to auction on the weekend just last Saturday. It's sold under the hammer for $1.9 million. Now, 
Um, there is a property right next door to this property that sold nine months ago. It was the same builder. It was the same full plan. It was like a, a match, um, a very, very close comparable sale. Now that property nine months ago also sold for $1.9 million. So two identical properties selling for the exact same price. Now over the nine month period, um, Karina Heights had median value changes of negative 17.5%. The Brisbane property market had negative median value changes of 10.4%. So if this is evidence and proof that not all properties are following that median data trend. And I've talked about it previously on this podcast, the fact that what has been selling um, can potentially impact that median because it is the composition of properties that can actually influence how a median value trend changes. So two identical properties side by side, nine months apart, selling for $1.9 million, despite broader market conditions showing that that second property should have sold for less. I'll throw a couple in before you finish off on a higher one. Um, a unit in Kelvin Grove, um, two bedroom, two bathroom unit, nice, nice, neat little unit that's been repainted. Um, open home literally on Saturday, 30 to 40 groups through multi offers. Uh, it, was, it was crowded. It was very, very busy um, through that one. Agent spoke to me yesterday. They were presenting all the offers. Haven't got the update yet, but uh, look, it would have sold. I'm and sure. I'm sure it would have sold. The price point there would have been in the early, early 500,000. For that one. Uh, and then an auction at Tarragindi, which one of our team from here at Streamline Property Buyers went to on the weekend at Tarragindi. Uh, 16 registered bidders at this one. Seven bidders were actually active in bidding and it sold again in the high one mills. And it's evidence of the fact that, you know, in, in some locations there's people with cash because you need to be well and truly pre-approved on finance to be bidding at auction, um, you know, in the high one mills. So um, evidence of the fact that there's 16 registered bidders, it, it shows that there's definitely market strength in, in a lot of pockets in Brisbane. And the last one which you've got there, which is um, New Market Street in Hendra, an auction we attended on the weekend. Yeah, look, multiple registered bidders um, ended up selling under the hammer for a very strong price, $5 million, um, top end of the market. Now, there's been a lot of talk that the top end of the market um, has actually been leading the price falls and not performing as well as the overall um, median value. That said, this same property sold um, two years, three months ago, back in January 2021 for $3,650. So if we look at the change in price, um, that's an increase of 36.5% for that property over that um, two year, three month period. Um, let's track that against the median for the suburb. So that suburb of Hendra showed median price changes from January 2021 through to the end of March 2023 of 34.5%. So that specific property trended just 2% above the median trend for that suburb, um, which is interesting because obviously um, that's more in line with what we might expect for that type of property. Um, but obviously we've also provided evidence where, you know, properties can sell um, well off what a median value trend will show. So I guess yeah. just providing evidence that you cannot always rely on a median to determine the current value uh, based on what a property might have sold for previously um, to what it might sell for today. But in some instances, um, it can be accurate. It's about monitoring current market conditions. And that, and that wasn't just one buyer negotiating and pushing the price up at all. Um, it was actually a competition between buyers. Mm -hmm. So there's more than one buyer actually pushing that property up to that $5 million mark as well. Yeah, look, we're not denying the fact that, um, you know, we might not yet have seen the um, impact or the full impact of the higher interest rate environment that might not yet have fully flowed through to borrowers. Um, we will definitely be expecting some weaker economic conditions in the months ahead as well. But, you know, despite these headwinds based on what we are seeing on the ground and based on the fundamentals for um, property markets in Brisbane, we have low supply, high demand. And this is why we're seeing that price growth um, at the moment. And unless we see something to shift that demand or increase that supply, we don't expect current conditions to change. But we'll be reporting back with um, a further summary in another month. Excellent. Well, that's our um, market update for the month. I will, as usual, I always say this, I'll let Melinda wrap things up and close it out for the end of the podcast. Uh, it's been great giving that information and we'll have more podcasts coming and um, more information. So from me, take care and bye for now. 
Thank you so much for tuning in once again. It's been a pleasure to bring you the latest update on what is happening here in Brisbane in terms of the data and on the ground. As always, if you enjoy this content, please leave us a review on iTunes. Help people understand um, what you love about our podcast. It does help others to find each episode. As always, hope you have a fabulous week and we look forward to speaking with you again soon. Bye for now.